A very good morning to all of you. I would like to welcome each and every one of you to our Watana Church International English Worship Service this morning. As we come together to worship our Lord, let us sit prayerfully that we all will have a blessed time even this morning, even though we could not be in the same place physically together. Let us continue to give thanks to God that we have a gift of this technology that has enabled us to worship together even though we are miles apart. Psalms 139 verses 1 to 6. Lord, you have examined me. You know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. Even from far away, you comprehend my plans. You study my traveling and resting. You are totally familiar with all my ways. There isn't a word on my tongue, Lord, that you don't already know completely. You surround me front and back. You put your hand on me. That kind of knowledge is too much for me. It's so high above me that I can't reach it. Let us continue worshiping our Lord by singing O Tip Tip Love of Jesus. Shall we all stand to sing? Please be seated. Today we will be talking and thinking about God's love. You heard in Psalm 139 in the call to worship how well God knows each one of us that no matter where we go God is already there before us. Even though we can't understand it, this is part of the way God loves each one of us. Let us listen <clears throat> to more words from Psalm 139, verses 7 through 10. Where could I go to get away from your spirit? Where could I go to escape your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. If I went down to the grave, you would be there too. 
If I could fly on the wings of dawn, stopping to rest only on the far side of the ocean, even there, your hand would guide me. Even there, your strong hand would hold me tight. Let us take a moment of silence together. Let us pray that we will understand the love of God. Let us pray that we will be forgiven for our sins and the things we have failed to do that we should have done. And let us listen for the loving voice of Jesus in our spirits. A moment of silence together. <clears throat> Let us listen to more words from Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Examine me, God. Look at my heart. Put me to the test. Know my anxious thoughts. Look to see if there is any idolatrous way in me. Then lead me on the eternal path. Let us continue in prayer together. O oh God of patience and God of love, we look all around us in this season of rain and we see things growing. Even in this dangerous time, we see nature still growing and green we pray that even in this difficult time around the world, let it be a time of growth in our hearts, in our spirits. Let us find the time to see the growth in us. And let us look around and see the growth in others. Let us still find time to give thanks to you let us rejoice in the smallest sign of green, in nature, but also in people. Let us be glad whenever we see someone who has grown mature in your love, in the faith of Jesus Christ. Let us rejoice when we see a person who walks in your strength, in your confidence, and yet in humility. Let us learn more and more to understand your love and your kindness. And let us come to know how much we are loved. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
It may seem surprising if someone asked you to find a passage in scripture about God's love. You might not choose the one I am about to read. This passage is from Matthew chapter 13, some verses beginning with verse 24 through 30 and 36 through 43. You might not think that this is a passage about the love of God, but it is. In the old English translation, the King James, it is often called the parable of the wheat and the tares. And tear is a word that we no longer use, but it is a word for those plants that grow up, the ones we don't want on the farm or in our gardens, the weeds, the wheat and the weeds. Jesus told the people another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like someone who planted good seed in his field. While people were sleeping, an enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat and went away. When the stalks sprouted and grew grain, then the weeds also appeared. The servants of the landowner came to him and said, Master, didn't you plant good seed in your field? Then how is it that it has weeds? An enemy has done this, he answered. The servants said to him, do you want us to go and gather them? But the landowner said no, because if you gather the weeds, you'll pull up the wheat along with them. Let both grow side by side until the harvest. And at harvest time, I'll say to the harvesters, first, gather the weeds and tie them together in bundles to be burned, but bring the wheat into my barn. Continuing with verse 30, Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. Jesus replied, the one who plants the good seed is the human one. Now this translation uses the term the human one for Jesus. Other translations use the term the son of man. The one who plants the good seed is the human one. The field is the world, and the good seeds are the followers of the kingdom, but the weeds are the followers of the evil one. The enemy who planted them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the present age. The harvesters are the angels. Just as people gather weeds and burn them in the fire, so it will be at the end of this present age. The human one will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that cause people to fall away, and all people who sin. He will throw them into a burning furnace, People there will be weeping and grinding their teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their father's kingdom. Those who have ears should hear. What is it like to be loved? truly to be loved. I shared this message with the girls at Watana School a couple of days ago, and I said many of us will think of movies that we have seen or TV shows that we have watched, um, or even the ads, the commercials that come on. I don't particularly 
watch movies or TV, but I watch quite a bit of YouTube. <laughs> and so I see many commercials, many ads, kosana. And many of these ads will show the perfect married couple or the perfect girlfriend and boyfriend, and they are so happy together. And they are having a wonderful time because they both drink Nescafe or whatever product that they use in the ad. And this kind of love is very important to many, many people. Of course it is. But let us remember that it is not everyone's experience. When I mentioned this to the, the students at Watana School, I said, you have seen couples who are not happy together, or one does not treat the other one well, and many of them <laughs> nodded their heads. So even schoolgirls know this. But today I am talking about a different kind of love, God's love. The love that Jesus has taught us and showed us through his life and his ministry and his sacrifice and his resurrection. This is the kind of love that says to each one of us in this world, to every person in this world, this is the love that says your life means something. You are somebody. You have value, and it will always be true. Your life matters. The kind of love we are thinking about today, and I hope coming to understand, is the kind of love shown by the master farmer in this story that Jesus tells in Matthew's Gospel. This kind of love is not suspicious. It doesn't go looking for mistakes and something wrong. It does not go looking for an excuse to try to scold someone or tell them how bad they are. This is the kind of love that allows people to grow and learn and change and do good things. In the case of the wheat in this story, I'm sure that most of my listeners know that in the Western world, and that includes the Middle East, in the time and the place of Jesus' life and ministry, wheat has been considered to be the basic food of life. This is why in the Lord's Prayer, in English, we pray, give us today our daily bread, because bread is made from wheat, and bread is the basic food in many countries. Sometimes I wonder here in Thailand, when we pray the Lord's Prayer in English, why we don't pray, give us this day our daily rice. Because for us, rice is our basic food. But I think we can all understand when Jesus uses wheat as an example, he is talking about the best of food. That is how people would have understood it when they were listening to him, the best of food. And he was using it as a picture of the food that we receive from God, the spiritual food, the food of our hearts, our minds, our souls. You and I can receive a special kind of power from God's love, and we can offer good spiritual food and the good life to others. We can be a witness. We can show people through the love of God that gives us strength. We can show people what is a good and growing life. A few years ago, I went to a preaching conference 
a whole week of some of the best preachers preaching sermons all day long and into the evening. Now, this may not sound like every church member's idea of fun, but for preachers, it, it is wonderful to listen to the best preaching and some of the most famous preachers. And I am not talking about the kind of preachers who end up on TV and tell you that God will make you rich in money. No, not that kind of preacher. I am talking about the preacher who challenges us with the truth of the gospel and the deep meaning of the Bible. So this was this is a wonderful opportunity for me to be there that week. It happened to be in my father's home city. So my father went with me. He was still living at that time, and he was still healthy. And my father was a missionary here in Thailand for many years, so he was also a pastor and a preacher. And I remember the first day when everyone was gathered, and there were hundreds of people, preachers, leaders, teachers, and they, there was a man who made an announcement about how things would be during the week and where to find what we were looking for and what would happen. And then he said, I have a question to ask you. Do you want to be important? Or do you want to be loved? And everybody sat up. Well, what, what is he talking about now? Do you want to be important, or do you want to be loved? And he said, you know, we have this week together with Christian leaders and Christian preachers and pastors and teachers, and this could be a wonderful week of spiritual community together, because when we hear preaching, we will also be worshiping together throughout the day and into the evening for a whole week together, we will be listening to some of our greatest preachers. It could be a week of, of worship and praise and joy that does not end together. And then he said, so turn off your cell phones. Here we call them Mutu, mobile phones. And he was reminding everyone that sometimes keeping your phone turned on during worship or during meetings and answering every phone call might be a sign that you are trying to look important to the other people. As an aside, I had a colleague who was a professor for a time in a seminary. He used to answer phone calls in the middle of his own lectures. His students did not understand. They did not approve. They thought it was terrible. Your lecture is one hour. Can you not wait and answer that phone call afterwards? So. What do you think happened in this conference? Do you think in such a group of hundreds of preachers and pastors, do you think they all turned off their mobile phones? No. When I shared this with the girls at Watana, I saw several of them shaking their heads like, no, no, no. They did not all turn off their phones. Even pastors are tempted to show off to each other. Because truly, in a week of a conference, would they not have someone else in their church back home who could take the phone calls if something important comes up, if there is an emergency, if there is a need? Is there no elder in their church? Is there, is there no deacon? Is there no other leader in their congregation who could answer the phone calls? This was before many of us were texting 
At least texting is quiet. <laughs> but bring, 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 in the middle of hundreds of people worshiping together. Yes, hello. Yes, this is Pastor. Blah, 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 blah. It happened many times during that week. And I saw some of the same faces. Now, how likely is it that the same pastor over and over would have so many emergencies in the same week? Did he want to be important or did he want to be loved? It is a question we could at least ask ourselves. Now, there is a German theologian uh, named Eugen Dravermann, and he has written so many books. I went, I went looking for his books again yesterday online, and there are one or two that have been translated into English, but nothing, nothing on ebook, and I don't buy actual books. They take up a lot of room and it takes forever to order them and get them to come here. Most of his books I saw online were in German or translated into Italian or translated into French. Very few in English and very expensive. One of his paperbacks was being listed for 580 American dollars on Amazon. <laughs> so. I have only read about him, but one of his main arguments, he writes a lot about human fighting and human conflict and the way people turn against each other in this world. And he says, from his point of view, the biggest reason is fear. People are afraid, and people are afraid of not being significant. Now, this is a big English word, significance. It is like the word important. So people are afraid of not being important, but it can also have a slightly different meaning because if you want to be significant, it does not mean you want other people to notice you, not necessarily. It does not necessarily mean you want to be famous. It just means that you want to be somebody who matters, somebody who is special. And if you are afraid that you are not, or you never will be, or someone is trying to take it away from you, you can become hurt and angry, and you can strike out at others. So this Christian teacher in Germany is saying that this is the reason we fight, because we are afraid that someone will take away from us what little sense of honor that we have. I think if I were preaching this in Thai, it would be easier. I like the words giet and the words thumbnang. You know, you can have giet and you don't have to be famous. You're just someone who matters, someone who has done something that that makes a difference, a good difference. Now, in the first letter to Timothy, in chapter 6, verse 10, it says that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. But we could also say that the fear of losing power never getting any is the root of all kinds of evil. Because people who want money, why do they want it? It gives them power to do what they would like to do, what they feel they need to do. I think the two are related. For thousands of years, people have tried to find a way to live longer where is the fountain of youth? I would like to live for hundreds of years. Or people want to become rich or powerful so that their family will be strong for hundreds of years. And then they may feel that 
they have not truly died and left this earth. I remember reading a cartoon years ago in the newspaper. And there was a character in the cartoon saying to one of the other figures in the cartoon and saying, I am going to run for election. I am going to run for political office. And his friend says to him, why do you want to do that? And you could see the way the artist drew his face that he, he didn't really know. And he said, well, I, I, want, I want to be somebody important. I, I want to be somebody. <coughs> now, you know and I know that politicians running for election will not say that even if it is true. No, that, that is too embarrassing. They would say, oh no, I, I am going to help the government. I am going to fix what is wrong in our province or our city or our country. This is why I want to run for office. Politicians don't say, well, I want to be noticed. I want to be famous. I want someone to think that I am special. Now, I said before, not everyone wants to be noticed in this life. Many people want the opposite. They want a quiet life where no one will bother them. But still, even people who want a quiet life want their life to mean something, to have some significance. Even if, <coughs> even if their life means they don't care what anyone else thinks. When I was in high school and I went to uh, Rongri and Nana Chat, which is now NIST, at the end of Soy 15 here on Sukhumwit, I used to take part in drama, in plays, and I used to play characters on the stage. And I remember the people who were behind the scenes, the ones who came out to move the scenery, change the tables and chairs, or move the trees around, whatever was on the stage, or the people who had your costume ready because you might have to change your costume very quickly between the scenes or the acts, or the people who put the makeup on your face. Some of those people acted as if they were the ones who were really important in this play. Not the actors whose faces you see out on the stage. No, no, no. We have the real power. And we don't care if no one sees our faces because we know the real stories. And people had better respect us. Because if you don't respect me, your costume might not be ready when you need it. I might make your face look ugly. I might not put the chair in the right place if you don't respect me. Now, they don't say these things, but some people who work behind the scenes will act this way, as if I don't care if anyone thinks I'm important because I know I'm important. So, you may know someone like that. Oh no, I don't need anyone to know who I am. I just want the power behind the scenes. Because everyone wants to have some meaning in this life. I remember years ago going to a reunion of students who had attended international school. This was in the United States. <coughs> The, the alumni still have reunions. Uh, those who graduated from ISB, Ronggin Nanachat, Sitkao, they still get together. And I heard that one daughter of missionaries, whom I used to know, refused to come because she thought she had not done anything important enough in her life to be able to be proud 
when she met her old classmates. She thought she needed to write and publish a book before she could see her old friends again. Oh my goodness. Everyone wants to be important in some way. But then, then what happens if instead of this worry, <coughs> you become angry and you decide that someone else must be punished because of your fear and your disappointment in this life. Because most people don't want to admit that they are afraid, not even to themselves. Oh, it's someone else's fault. I remember in the days when I was training to be a hospital chaplain, Anusasok is what we call them among the Christians in Thailand, in the hospital. And a friend and colleague of mine told a story. He said that he had visited a sick man in the hospital. The man was very sick. I think he had had a heart attack. And he was, thank you, Atan. And he was uh, also upset. He was very unhappy in his spirit, not because he was sick, but he had a story to tell about his church where he was a leader. This patient in the hospital belonged to a small church out in the country. And in the United States, you know, the United States is not a very old country, so the churches are not necessarily that old. This little church was probably maybe 100, 150 years old at that time. And this man who was sick told my friend, he said, as soon as I ended up in the hospital, one of our church members started making phone calls, calling people on the telephone. Again, this was before we all had cell phones. One, he said, one of my members called every single member of the church and told them they were not welcome to come back. And he said, in one week, my church was destroyed. One week, one person called up everyone in the church. It is almost as if he said, you are a weed, you are no good, you must be pulled out and thrown away, you cannot come back to this church, we don't want you. And in one week, that little congregation was destroyed. Master said the farm workers in the story that Jesus told, Master, there are weeds in the field. We've got to get rid of them. I don't know what finally happened to this little church because hospital chaplains will often hear an important story. But once the patient goes home, we don't hear the rest of the story. But someone thought that everyone else in that church was a weed and that they needed to go away. So why? Why did the master in the story tell the farm workers not to pull any weeds until the end? Well, I am not a farmer, but I learned that there is a weed that grows in wheat fields and it looks very much like the real wheat. It is almost like it is in disguise. And you cannot tell the difference until both the weeds and the wheat are full grown. And apparently, when the good wheat is grown and ready to be gathered, ready to be harvested, ready to be taken into the farmer's barn. When the wheat is grown, it bows its head. Because like rice, all the good food is here. It becomes heavy and it bows its head. 
the weed, this particular weed stands straight up. This weed is called the bearded darnel grass. <coughs> and it's interesting that Jesus told this story because it's almost as if he wants us to see that those who try to be prideful when we want to make ourselves more important than other people and that means more to us than doing something that is good, achieving, having success. No, 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 I want to be taller than you and I want you to be smaller than me. So it was a good comparison. This particular weed actually is poison. If they accidentally gather it with the wheat and people eat too much of it, it is very dangerous, this kind of grass. So, what about you? Would you rather be loved or would you rather be important or at least be able to look down on somebody else? at least be able to make someone else feel small. Some people who turn their fear into anger towards others will lie. They will tell stories that are not true about others and ruin their lives or ruin their work. They may pretend that they don't care, that they don't need to be important or they may tell other people, you are no good, you are worthless, you need to go away. Or they may use violence, they may go to war. Master, there are weeds in the field. This is what the farm workers said. Should we pull them all out? And what, what did the master say? The master said, no. Some of those plants that look like weeds to you are going to grow and be the finest wheat. They are going to grow and change and achieve and learn and succeed, but they will also have the humility to bow their heads and they will be able to do many good things in this life because they are loved. You and you and you are loved through the power of God's love, through the power of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Ajahn Ann, for, for the word from the scripture. May the good Lord continue to bless you. So then, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is in an obligation to ourselves to live our lives on the basis of selfishness. If you live on the basis of selfishness, you are going to die. But if by the spirit you put to death the actions of the body, you will live. Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 13. For the offering, um, we are putting up on the screen our church official bank account, which is from Kung Thai Bank. I will be reading out the account number for all of us. The account number is 85 Zero six. If you transfer the money to the account, please do not forget to send us the receipt through the line official line uh, account. Uh, you can scan the QR code and you can send it uh, through the uh, Watana Church Office line official account. During the offering, we all will remain seated while singing, O oh love, that will not let me go.
Shall we all stand for doxology? God of love and God of patience. We are never more blessed than when we know ourselves to be rich as your children, rich in your love and in your strength. Everything that we give today as offering, as tithe, or as a gift is really yours anyway. Bless not only what we give to your work, but bless also what we still have in our pockets. Let us remember that what we still have in our pockets is also yours. And let us remember that you call us to be faithful as the master farmer was faithful through Jesus Christ who loves us. Amen. Please be seated. I once again um, bring greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, especially to those friends who are joining us for the first time. We are glad to have you all worshiping with us this morning, even though we are not able to be in the same place worshiping together. And we look forward that we will have a time when we could all come together and worship together in one place. I have a few announcements. The first one is our service, uh, even though the Thai congregation, uh, Thai service is open for the congregations, our English service will continue to be online until the further notice. So if we open the church, we will notify through various uh, social medias. So until the further notifications, our service, English service will continue to be online. Second announcement is we have also started a Zoom Bible study online from the book, uh, from the epistle of uh, Titus. Uh, and I am teaching from uh, the Bible class. So if you are interested to join the Bible study class, 
you are most welcome and you can contact me so that I can share the link for the uh, online class. Next announcement, um, pastoral team and the church prayer team have started visiting to those individuals and families who need prayers. So some of the pictures that uh, we have taken last week. So especially those people who are not able to be a part of uh, our congregations because of uh, so many reasons. So we have started visiting the, uh, the, those members for prayers. Next, uh, every Sunday we have been making this announcement about the work going on in and around our church. So the first one that we see is uh, we are also construct, uh, making new notice board that we can see. And we are also putting up the stainless steel cage in front of the church. Um, and the security boot, the new one, is completed and ready to be used. And uh, there are so many other works that we can see on the screen that is going on. Thanks for your continuous prayer for all those who are putting day and night to complete this work. And let us continue that um, this work will uh, complete at the earliest. Next, uh, the last one is we are still putting up the food cupboard in front of the church. So if you are still thinking of helping or doing something uh, during this time, you are most welcome to buy a food or any uh, needs um, and put them in the cupboard. So um, many people have been uh, blessed through this uh, initiative and uh, we look forward that uh, many people will be continued to bless through our contributions. So these are the few announcements. Hymn of dedication, shall we all stand to sing, I would be true. God, we thank you that you are the God of love and that each person on this earth is someone you made, someone you love. Help us to understand what love is. Help us to know that we are not alone. We have not been forgotten. Help us to know that even when other people have failed to love us as they should, that you love us and your love gives us the power to do what is good. And now may God who created us bless you and keep you. May God who saves us shine upon you May God the Spirit who guides and teaches us look upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs> 